My paper is entitled Python Implementation for Brain-Computer Interface Research by Acquiring and Processing the NeuroSky AG Data for Classifying Multiple Voluntary Eye Blinks. First of all, I want to thank for the support offered by Professor Dr. Engineer Ilana Constanza Roshka, who is my PhD coordinator. I am the single author of this paper, but the main ideas were previously discussed with my favorite mentor, Professor Dr. Engineer Marius Cristian Luculescu, who had an essential impact on my academic development. The structure of this presentation is the following. One, introduction. Two, hardware system. Three, a software system, Python implementation. Four, a raw EEG acquisition and EEG training data set generation. Five, artificial neural network space classification of multiple voluntary eye blinks. Six, results. Seven, discussions. And eight, conclusions. Introduction. The brain-computer interface research field has considerably evolved during the last decades by providing efficient means of controlling the assistive devices, communication, sleep, and stress monitoring, especially for people with neuromotor disabilities. PCI is a promising solution by providing an artificial route for replacing the neuronal pathways, connecting the brain matter areas with the peripheral nerves and muscles. The BCI purpose is to allow the translation of the thoughts into commands transmitted to an assistive robotic device. This desire is currently unachievable outside an experimental laboratory due to significantly higher requirements, including the complexity of the real-time neuronal biopotentials processing, the ability of the neuromotor disabled person to perform BCI-related cognitive tasks, to elicit recognizable patterns, and the artificial intelligence techniques necessary to convert the intentions into actions. Therefore, BCI prototypes enabling affordable software and hardware solutions to improve the research results are still welcome and expected to overcome the existing issues by providing maximum accuracy, quick response, and rapid information transfer rate. According to scientific literature, implementing the most straightforward BCI system involves controlling an external device by detecting the voluntary eye blinking across the electroencephalographic signal. Moreover, the easiest way to acquire the raw EEG signal for developing versatile BCI applications is to use a portable headset such as NeuroSky MindWave Mobile. The majority of the previous scientific articles focused on calling on the shelf NeuroSky libraries, providing convenient programming methods for achieving simple BCI applications with the expense of technical limitations for accomplishing advanced BCI research instruments. Therefore, several thresholding-based algorithms determined the measurement of the attention and meditation level and the eye blink strength used as commands in a BCI. Few papers explored the NeuroSky EEG data acquisition and processing by applying different methods based on statistics, wavelet transform, supported vector machines or artificial neural networks. In addition, the investigation of the mentioned methods targeted a specific BCI application, not extendable to a general framework for conducting BCI research by enabling the fundamental phases, e.g. data acquisition, processing, and classification. And thus, it results in the main contribution of this paper by providing simple BCI research automated solutions implemented in Python programming language to enable the NeuroSky EEG data processing, features extraction, training data set generation, and artificial neural networks based classification. Executing these stages resulted in performance assessment of the artificial neural network accuracy for simple, double, and triple voluntary eye blinks detection. Also, it resulted in an EEG data set comprising 2,000 sequences distributed as follows. 1,000 sequences of one eye blink detected, 1,000 sequences of two eye blinks detected, and 1,000 sequences of three eye blinks detected. Each sequence corresponds to the acquisition of 1,024 raw EEG samples and the following seven extracted statistical features. Mean, median, standard deviation, the sum of values, skewness, quartosis coefficient, and root mean square. Unfortunately, the scientific literature reported very few EEG datasets to test the algorithms of voluntary eye blinking detection. The novelty of this paper resulted from customized Python scripts for enabling the acquisition, analysis, and classification of the raw EEG signal detected by the NeuroSky embedded biosensor. Hardware system NeuroSky MindWave mobile headset. 
The BCI application developed in the current research involved raw EEG signal acquisition from the bias sensor of the NeuroSky portable headset. The NeuroSky headset has an embedded sensor located to the prefrontal lobe on the forehead at the FP1 position according to the, to the International 1020 EEG system. The NeuroSky is based on the embedded Thingier chip, which enables EEG data acquisition with a sampling rate of 512 Hz and provides several benefits. Software system Python implementation. The current research contributes to the brain computer interface field by implementing customized Python scripts to achieve the following phases. Cerebral biopotentials acquisition, raw EEG graphical displaying, statistical features extraction, EEG dataset generation, and classification of voluntary eye blink, raw EEG signal acquisition, and EEG training dataset generation. NeuroPy library was updated to run in Python 3. The raw value variable stored each value of the raw EEG signal detected by the embedded NeuroSky biosense. As a drawback, not to the NeuroPy library, it is not easy to get precision regarding waiting time set to two milliseconds between the raw EEG data samples. A healthy subject, girl, 29 years old, participating in the experiment involving 75 sessions of performing one, two, or three voluntary eye blinks, and each session included 40 sequences representing 40 simple, double, or triple voluntary eye blinks. A recurrent time interval set to two seconds introduced by a beep sound determined a sequence of 1,000 24 raw EEG samples. It resulted in a CSV, a CSV file comprising 40 sequences with 1,024 samples, each organized in 40 rows and 1,024 columns representing the raw EEG data. Therefore, the previously mentioned 75 sessions led to obtain 75 CSV files, including the 40 multiplied by 1,024 equals 40,960 raw samples for each of the three classes. It followed the extraction of seven statistical features from the raw EEG data containing 1,024 samples and the generation of the EEG data set necessary to classify the multiple voluntary hybrids. The extracted statistical features were mean, median, standard deviation, root mean square, the sum of values, QNES, and quartosis coefficient. Thus, a single data EEG data set consisted of eight columns, seven for features and one for class and 40 rows, 40 sequences of two seconds each for recording 1,024 EEG samples. 75 CSV files represented the 75 EEG data sets to classify the multiple voluntary eye blinks, 25 with simple eye blinks, 25 with double eye blinks, and 25 with triple eye blinks. Concatenating all the, the 75 EEG datasets resulted in a single EEG dataset comprising 75 multiplied by 40 equals 3,000 sequences of eye blinks. Then the resulted CSV file consisted of 3,000 rows and eight columns necessary to train an artificial neural network to classify the multiple voluntary eye blinks. Artificial neural networks based classification of multiple voluntary eye blinks. Another contribution of the current research is implementing a customized Python script to employ the artificial neural network for multiple voluntary eye classification. The following Python libraries included the necessary specific functions, NumPy, Matplotlib, Pandas, Piera Suite, TensorFlow, Deep Learning Framework, and Psyche. Further, it followed the EEG dataset splitting into a training subset and a testing subset. Thus, the testing subset constituted 20% of the entire EEG dataset, resulting in 600 out of the 3,000 samples for testing purpose. An essential stage consisted in creating the artificial neural network composed of four layers. The structure of the first and second hidden layers was the following. Number of neurons equals to 1,400, the uniform distribution used to initialize the weights, and the activation function equals to a rectifier linear unit. The input layer had seven neurons corresponding to the previously mentioned seven statistical features. The output layer had three neurons corresponding to the three classes regarding recognizing a simple double and triple voluntary eye blinks. Compiling the, the artificial neural network involved setting the following parameters. 
optimizer is SGD or stochastic gradient descent, loss function is categorical cross entropy, and matrix is accuracy. The SGD convex function is used as optimizer to determine the suitable set of weights by identifying a local minimum of the input function. Thus, it is necessary to set the learning rate to an appropriate value, 0 0.00001. A momentum equals to 0 0.99 was also set to increase the speed of the optimization process. The following critical stage consisted in the fitting of the compiled artificial neural network to the generated EEG dataset. The artificial neural network was, was trained on 1,920 samples and validated on 480 samples. A sample is each of the 40 sequences or rows representing the measured values of the seven statistical features from each of the 75 EEG data sets. As mentioned previously, 20% representing 600 samples of the entire EEG data set containing 3,000 samples were necessary for testing per. It remained 2,400 samples aimed for training and validation per. 20% of the 2,400 samples or 480 EEG data sequences were necessary for validation purpose. Then, considering the hyperparameters, batch size equals to 2 and epochs, epochs equals 2,000 and the rest of 1,920 rows of training data, there were 960 batches with two samples each and 2,000 passes through the whole EEG data set. Finally, the, the, the artificial neural network model made predictions on the testing data composed of 600 samples. Also, they resulted in loss and accuracy specific to the testing process necessary to evaluate the performance of the artificial neural network model. Also, the confusion matrix showed detailed results regarding the correctly and incorrectly detected samples from each of the three output classes, simple, double, and triple voluntary hybrid. Results. The proposed artificial neural networks based architecture aimed for multiple voluntary IBINs classification reported the results shown in this table. A video demonstration of the Python based implementation for voluntary IBINs classification is available at these two YouTube unlisted links. Discussions. Although the obtained results reported high values of accuracy for training, validation, and testing the compiled Python based artificial neural network, further experiments are necessary to analyze possible particularities implied by a large number of individuals taking into account their age, gender, stress level, degree of disability, or the ability to focus on accomplishing the required task to evaluate, to ex execute simple, double, or triple eye blink. The customized artificial neural network based architecture aims to classify eye blinks characterized by average M. The artificial neural network may need improvements to differentiate between voluntary eye blinks of various things depending on the effort of the eyeball mask. Otherwise, the presented Python automated scripts aims to offer a general purpose BCI research instrument as long as the conducted instruments involve the following three fundamental states. Raw EEG data acquisition, processing enabled by features extraction, and artificial neural network space classification. Still, the proposed Python implementation aims to enable the thin gear based chip of the most affordable and portable EEG commercial headset, the Neural Sky Mindwave Mobile. In addition, the presented Python software tool provides its usefulness for any application that involves the assessment of the previously mentioned seven statistical features. Conclusions. This paper presents a Python based implementation of a simple BCI related research instrument necessary to acquire, process, and classify the raw EEG signal detected by the embedded sensor of the NeuroSky headset. A customized artificial neural networks-based architecture classified the multiple voluntary eye blinks used, to con used as control signals in a straightforward brain-computer interface application. It resulted in the generation of a training data set containing 3,000 recordings evenly distributed for detecting simple, double, and triple voluntary eye blinks. It also involved extracting seven statistical features from the raw EEG signal. The proposed Python application provides simplicity and efficiency to help researchers explore and experiment with the working principle underlying the BCI scientific field. Future research directions should update the artificial 
neural network framework to classify voluntary IBs of various things, mild, regular, or firm. Also, the Python-based artificial neural network should differentiate between spontaneous, reflexive, and voluntary IBs. Moreover, the BCI instrument requires improvements to detect wings precisely. Extracting additional statistical features will extend the universality of the experiments conducted with the proposed BCI software solution. The ultimate goal is to achieve a real-time running of the Python-based voluntary eyeblings classification. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Luciano. Dear colleagues, do you have some questions or comments? Could I ask something? Uh, Michael Shishkin, Polytechnical Institute, Ukraine, Kharkiv. Do you yes. hear me? Yeah. Yes, of course. So, uh, my question is what uh, value of delay between uh, obtaining some uh, signals like ETG or something else uh, and uh, uh, results and reaction for it in hardware uh, me mechanism it so what value of delay okay so the delay between uh, each eg samples uh, is equal to two milliseconds and uh, this way uh, it results a time interval of one second and during this time interval will it will result of 512 uh, samples. Depending on the performance of the computer, for Windows-based uh, operating system, it is possible not to achieve the two milliseconds uh, time interval. Then the most uh, frequent time interval is 10 milliseconds between EEG samples. And then it will result 100 EEG samples during one second. Uh. I see. Uh, so, uh, if you uh, could prognose uh, some hardware implementation for uh, uh, for for uh, control any moving any 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 uh, any uh, hardware devices, uh, so between uh, obtaining uh, the signals and reaction, you have uh, not in in real time it's it's not yeah. about not real time yeah, yeah i i understood uh previously i developed some level application and um, at that time the time response was most in instantaneous uh in parallel with the acquisition processing and classification of the signal uh, it will result to the execution of uh, the action uh, here on Python, it's uh, quite uh, difficult to obtain um, this uh, quick time response. It may be between 500 milliseconds and one sec. Uh, it is uh, under progress, such an application. Thank you. Thank you very much. May I? Thank you. Professor, do you have any? Other questions? Well, may I ask a question? Please. Uh, I am Victoria Pascorta from uh, the local uh, University of Medicine and Pharmacy in Kishina, Moldova, Department of Anesthesia and Intensive Care. And uh, I'm a little bit familiar with the field because I'm uh, performing. Uh, in a way, similar research. And first of all, I would like to uh, thank Juana for a quite interesting presentation. I was uh, attending the yesterday presentation too. And uh, uh, I, I can say as a comment that in my opinion is quite ingenious uh, using uh, this uh, not costly parts for solving such an important task first. Second, uh, I uh, have understand your concern uh, when you uh, mentioned that it's quite difficult to find uh, available uh, data uh, without uh, uh, eye blinking because usually the eye blinking is considered uh, in EEG analysis an artifact and uh, need, needs to be removed uh, and uh, but in your case uh, is, is a, a, an oppositely different situation and uh, a question uh, 
you uh, um, as 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 far as I, I got it, uh, you uh, uh, are using uh, the a multi layer uh, perceptron, uh, and uh, um, I have seen uh, quite quite uh, high uh, accuracy and other metrics. Uh, speaking about the um, effectiveness of, of this method. But uh, can you tell me uh, uh, about um, overfitting? Uh, was uh, it a problem? Uh, because uh, usually it's a problem with a uh, multi-layer uh, perceptron. Uh, the, the accuracy that I've named was uh, 92% for both uh, validation and the training or fitting uh, process. Currently, for this test, uh, I, I didn't uh, encounter any issues. It was a quite a simple application for an experimental um, a prototype. And one more question, thank you. Uh, uh, how about using a recurrent neural network? Uh, some uh, researchers uh, are presenting as more suitable for this type of uh, signal. Uh, have you ever tried a recurrent uh, neural network or not? No, no, uh, no. I'm, I'm still in the beginning uh, stage. No, uh, I don't We shall I continue don't. the research because uh, Wana will finish his thesis. Uh, her thesis, so uh, at the end of our research, maybe she will uh, uh, do this thing also. Thank you, Thank you for much. suggesting us, of course. <laughs> very interesting. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, uh, our paper, Object Locating System by Phone Tracking, intends to present a very simple system for locating and tracking a moving object, which means to produce information about the position of a target, fixed or mobile, placed in a free space or inside the structure. Generally, the location can be approached on two well-defined spaces. In free space or outdoor, the location seems to be based uh, quite solidly on GPS system, systems and um, inside certain structures, indoor location, it's found in many areas. We can talk about location and surveillance in the medical field on one hand for protection purposes for the supervision of physically unsupervised patients and on the other hand for rapid location detection of instruments or devices in a short time adapted to time intervention. Uh, this notion is also find the uh, also finds its full meaning in the industrial field for management of devices, tools, and other devices uh, for the efficient, efficient location of store products. Localization techniques can be separated into two categories depending on how they communicate between nodes. Centralized that involve the transfer of data to a central node in order to calculate the location of each node, or decentralized or distributed depend on the ability of each node or sensor to determine its own location, having limited communication with the nearest nodes. Uh, this is a system of um, a tracking object, moving object uh, uh, became uh, actually, actually func functionally in 1965 for the first time. Uh, with a system called transit. It was uh, used by the American Army till 1996 when it was replaced uh, by the GPS. But uh, after that, there are a lot of solution, solution uh, that were built and used in this, uh, uh, in this domain. Uh, our paper is uh, structured on four uh, parts, introduction that I already presented. And after that, uh, about we shall speak about the object itself. We, we intended to do something very uh, low cost and very simple with a good or satisfactory 
accuracy. This system uh, is a uh, way to detect its own position by specify, specifying its coordinates it's implicitly the support position so it can be placed on an ob other object or person. He will transmit this coordinate via SMS, coordinates via CMC, SMS in the format of a link to a receiver uh, is programmed and which opens Google Maps indicating the determined position on the map. The system is structured on three main parts. A development board Arduino, which uh, transfer data, uh, which is based uh, on, a, on a microcontroller ATP Mega uh, 328P. After that, uh, the shield M500. Uh, 90E module uh, transfer data from the serial port to uh, the GSM network. It's, uh, it is uh, uh, the, e, the M590E is a compact wireless GPS module that provides SMS and data service. The module Neo 6M GPS is a complete and high performance GPS receiver with a high power of satellite detection and which allows a wide range of connection options. The SIM card represents a communication with a communication provider, which also ensures the covered area. All components are grouped in a housing made in hard plastic uh, and uh, constructed or, or built by 3D painting that I didn't show in the, in the paper because it's very simple. It has an aesthetic role and also closes the system uh, to be easy transported and uh, giving it uh, the necessary rigidity and uh, during handling. After mounting the assembly and inserting the CM, SIM card, uh, a series of tests and settings was performed as to the device to be uh, performing. Testing the modem and network connection will verify the modem, uh, uh, modem's identification number. It is unique to each modem and it is used to identify, identify valid devices that can connect to a GSM work. As soon as the number has been identified from the modem, Arduino will identify and retain the network to which it is connected, as well as the signal strength from the network to the serial port. After connecting to the network with the previous procedure, other functions of the board are testing, connecting to a GSM network, and sending an SMS message to an established phone number. To connect the internet, in addition to the, to the SIM card, some additional information from the provider's cell phone is required. Each mobile phone has an uh, access point name that connects the cellular network to the, inter the cellular network to the internet via software routine, which provides the connection to Arduino uh, and uh, retains its contents. After mounting the location, system components and testing their operation and connection to the network. Uh, where perf perform fire test in a known location. Acquisition, transmission and displaying the results involves the following steps. Positioning the device and powering it. It is powered by an external uh, source. Uh, turning on the device that by programming had already assigned the mobile fine number to which it will send the SMS message and the warning of the location and receiving messages indicating a link containing the coordinates of the detected location. Following the operating of respective links, the latitude and longitude coordinates will, were obtained 
and location was placed in Google Maps, which also opens automatically by programming. All tests we did uh, were performed at Transylvania University of Brasov, and we uh, performed a lot of tests. Why, why we, would, we choose this location? Because there on Transylvania University, generally the signals for phones are very low. So we considered that if the system can function there and we shall have good results, uh, we, um, we, we are sure that it will be well function in other locations. I, I shall show you only three detection, we made maybe hundreds uh, detection for, for uh, verifying the system and all were satisfactory. This is the first location in a, in a forest zone. We, it was placed here in a forest zone. We were placed here where is the university and we, we received the message, the map, and its location on Google Earth. The second, we moved on the platform, central platform of the university. This is the main entrance and all these buildings, round buildings included in a circle, consist uh, in our university. So it was, placed, it was placed here and we could detect its position. In order to verify its accuracy, it accuracy, I shall so show you the next one. It was placed very close from the first position, and we shall we had the difference between the two ones. In conclusion, the main objective of the study was to create a programmable system for locating and tracking an object or a person moving which ensures the transmission of information about the target position through mobile networks. The presented system ensures a high adaptability to various types of users by programming the system for different areas, areas of action depending on the nature of the target, target movement, the size of the movement area, the speed of the movement. It's relatively small. It has relatively very small dimensions. It has less than 100 grams uh, as weight and the high autonomy being uh, um, connected to an external battery. With the help of this device, it is possible to make the location with satisfactory accuracy, as you could see on the last two recordings I presented. Thank you very much for your attention. Now my, uh, my screen uh, makes me miserable. It's not the first time that arrives to me. Do you have any question? Do you listen to me, hear me? Uh, yes, uh, we do. And uh, uh, can I ask you a question? Please do, Professor. Uh, well, once again, I would like to uh, thank you for a very interesting uh, presentation and a very interesting idea. And uh, again, what uh, amazed me uh, is using simple parts, creating a quite a sophisticated uh, result. Uh, and uh, uh, I have a question concerning the uh, programming environment or language, uh, the pro pro programming parts of the application. Oh, all, all software we used are free and yes. they are furnished by Arduino. Uh -huh. In the moment we bought uh, the, uh, the board, uh, we got also free the programming. If you enter through, uh, on, uh, on Arduino, Mm -hmm. you will find every component with its routine programming. So it's not a problem. That's the reason the system is very low cost. 
Uh -huh. we, we spent for all system about uh, less than 10 euro. Wow, fantastic. It sounds great. And uh, have you presented this to uh, the, the uh, authorities that uh, probably will finally uh, use uh, such an application or not yet? It was the idea for this system. In fact, uh, I had the idea for a license project for, of a student. Uh -huh, I see. In the, uh, the, the base of the system was made by, by a student uh, who finished mechatronics. And uh, after that, we improved it. We got it more little because it was a little big. And uh, in the future, we intend to do it very, very little because there are Arduino Uno Mini and other systems. We can put it in a system with a size of about uh, uh, two centimeters di diameter. So it will be like a spy. <laughs> Amazing. Thank yes. you. Thank it you is very possible. Much. Thank you, Professor. And uh, I want to apologize to everybody for my English, but I'm not speaking currently English. Yeah, in I, I live and I uh, work in French. So wow. my, my current I, day language is French. So uh, anytime I intend, I, I try to speak English. Uh, I. I have only French words in yes. mind. I, I know this problem everybody. because uh, uh, French was also my first uh, uh, foreign language. Uh, later on, I had to switch to, to, to English, but for a quite a long time, I, I needed first to uh, omit the French words and then say the, the English ones. Yes. So, every, uh, every time anyway, uh, it was a very clear your presentation for me, at least. Uh, so thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you all. If you have any other question. Can I uh, ask one question? Uh, Mikhail Shishkin, uh, Kharkiv University. Uh, yes, so, uh, uh, would you ask me uh, how many satellites, GPS satellites, you need to uh, raise your uh, Four. security? Four. 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 Uh, like a, like a normal like, uh, uh, yeah. network, Professor. In yeah. fact, we use the normal network, existing normal network. Not less than three satellites you should to calculate accuracy. Yes, but you need the force for correction. So, General. good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. So, dear colleagues, my name is Victoria Kalisnik. Let me present to your attention a study of features of telemedicine technology for monitoring of patients with atopic dermatitis, performed by a group of authors from three Kharkiv universities, which I represent as a speaker. I would like to thank the respected authors for their trust. So, Let's go. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused a huge motivation for the telemedicine technologies developing and, first of all, teleconsultation for patients' examination and making some diagnosis remotely, as well as monitoring the effectiveness of treatment over time. Along with the new capabilities of modern telemedicine technologies, Nevertheless, questions arise related to ensuring the identity on, of conditions and hardware for recordings and transforming data, and accordingly, the repeatability of survey results. The distinctive features of telemedicine video information is raise large arrays of digital data conditioned by their required volumes and quality. The existing, existing methods of optimizing telemedicine visualization provide for both the creation of new algorithms for processing and transferring video information and the optimization of their volume through the use of more informative methods for recording and analyzing this video information. 
These methods include the methodology for improving the primary data of telemedicine visualization and the algorithm for their process. This study provides a monitoring example of skin video and images to condition control of patients diagnosed with atopic dermatitis. It is advisable to use the telemedicine services when diagnosing and monitoring the skin conditions of patients with atopic dermatitis at different stages of the disease. In most cases, it is sufficient to take into account only the visual characteristics of the skin condition. However, when estimation the color components of skin areas in the HSV system, the indicators such as lighting and characteristic of the dermatoscopy model can significantly affect the analyzed data. Therefore, it seems appropriate to introduce such indicators in the end to the shooting conditions as the relative values of histogram features, image contrast, and the value of the second local maximum of the image intensity histogram. Thus, figure 1a and 1b show photographs of human skin fragments in normal conditions and in the acute stage of atopic dermatitis, respectively. Magnification 20 times. Figures 2a and 2b show histograms of the corresponding images of the skin. Determination of contrast was performed at the difference between the maximum and minimum intensity levels on the histogram at a level of 5% of the value of the global extreme. The efficiency of solving problems of monitoring the stage of object with random properties as a rule depends on the, on the correct choice of the most informative system of features that are sensitive to change in the characteristic of the object. Any control formally implements, uh, implements a testing procedure, the effectiveness of the result of which is determined by reliability the probability of making the right decision. This approach is complicated by the fact that the uncertainty of the properties of the research object, the task of selecting informative parameters becomes problematic especially if the metrological support of information transferring in the structure of the control system is difficult, which often occurs during medical, medical diagnostics. A feature of medical diagnostic data is a high individual anatomical and physical variability of patients and the absence of, in fact, actual standards of the norm and specific pathological conditions a different stage of diseases. The lack of metrological scales of diagnostic features necessary for comparing diagnostic parameters and the clearly defined criteria for the norm often doesn't allow to achieve the required diagnostic reliability and to achieve a decrease in error during implementation. The choice of the op optimal according to the criterion of maximum reliability system of information features is a classical problem of statistical synthesis under condition of a prior uncertainty. The ranking of the features according to the information, information content is carried out according to the value of the control reliability indicator or the error probability. Other authors have carried out studies to estimate the possibility of using criteria and models of parametric recognition discrimination when comparing the diagnosis capabilities of the image contrast indicators and the value of the second after the global of the histogram. In this experiment, the five informative parameters X were used in the Calculations to determine the diagnostic significance for the parameters for the detection of atopic dermatitis at the acute stage. These informative parameters are displayed 
in a certain order of numbering. X1, core tone of the skin area in the HSV system. X2, color saturation of the skin area in the HSV system. X3, color intensity. X4, contrast of the fragment of the skin image. And the value of the largest local in relation to the global maximum in percent. These indicators were measured according to the data of digital dermatoscopy using a handheld digital dermatoscope UM039 camera with a 5 megapixel video sensor and 24 magnification. Patients were divided into two groups with acute atopic dermatitis and conditional norm control group. In the analysis, the linear discrimination model was used. The main idea to use discriminant anal analysis is to determine if population differ in the mean of any variable of linear combination of variables, and then use these variables to predict for new members to particular group belonging. For telemedicine diagnostic, this means to which group of diagnosis features the result of this test can be attributed and what it is contribution to the final diagnosis. The generally accepted methods of statistical synthesis on the condition of a prior uncertainty of the input parameters, the selection and ranking of the analyzed parameters is performed in accordance with their significance in relation to the given functional characteristics of the object under study. In this case, the probability of making an optimal decision is estimated by the values of quality and reliability indicators of the probability of errors. To build a linear discrimination model of diagnostic parameters for telemedicine diagnostic, the discriminant analysis method was chosen as the basic model. In the case of two states of the object, norm and deviation from the norm is characterized by conditional probability distribution densities, which is defined as this formulas. In this mean, uh, the means and variance of X for this condition, accordingly for normal Gaussian dis distributions, and uh, this formula is probability of a decision error in the form of object states is determined like this formula for variance through the probability integral uh, by formula one, where uh, formula two is the mean and standard deviation include in equation two, respectively, are determined by the formulas below, where M is the number of measurement of the studied indicator. This is result, results of experiment where uh, the estimation of the indicators influence of color characteristics and histogram features of skin areas in normal conditions and in the acute stage of atopic dermatitis. The result of discriminant analysis when estimation the influence of the main visual, color, and histogram characteristics of image of skin areas of patients in these groups are given the probability of a roof are equal 0.1. Graph shows the increase in the normalized Euclidean distance when adding parameters, indicators of polar characteristics and histogram features to the discrimination model in the control of atopic dermatitis in the acute stage with the norm uh, with five dimension of space of informative parameters. The graphs 
uh, of the increase in the corresponding normalized Euclidean distance when adding parameters to the dis discrimination model and the change in the probability of making a diagnostic decision error when controlling atopic dermatitis in the acute stage with the norm are shown in the figure three and figure four respectively. This is graph of the decrease in the error of making a diagnostic decision when adding parameters, indicator of power characteristics and histogram features to the discrimination model when control atopic dermatitis in the acute stage with a norm for five dimension of space of informative parameters. It follows from this graph that the greatest contribution of the increase in the normalized Euclidean distance and accordingly of the decrease in the probability of error is made by the indicators of change in the color tone of skin reducing the probability of error to 0 0.27 and then changing the saturation indicator reducing the probability of error to 0 0.2 of the features determined from the image intensity histogram, the contrast index, in fact, the height of image intensity histogram, plays a significant role, reducing the error probability by 0 0.04 to 0 0.16 at once. The value of the fifth indicator, the largest local relatively to the global maximum, is percentage terms reduce the error probability to an additional 0.14. Estimation of total influence of color characteristic and histogram features of skin areas in normal conditions and in the acute stage of atopic dermatitis when they added to the total indicator obtained from the Analysis, analysis of blood serum. This graph, uh, graph uh, shows the increase in the normalized epilidium distance when adding parameters to the data of digital dermatoscopy of the skin, power characteristics in the HSV system, and indicators of the intensity histogram in the discrimination model in the control of atopic dermatitis in the acute stage with the norm, uh, when uh, six dimension of the space of informative parameters, the first parameters takes into, into account the integral contribution of immunological data. This diagram of the error decrease of making a diagnostic decision when adding parameters to the data of digital dermatoscopy of the skin, color characteristic of HSV system and indicators of the intensity histogram. In the discrimination model, in the control of atopic dermatitis in the acute stage with the norm. Diagnosis of atopic dermatitis only by visual characteristics of the skin, digital dermatoscopy data, color and histogram indicators allow monitoring this pathology with an error probability up to 0.14. This allows using the digital dermatoscopy method independently for express diagnostics of atopic dermatitis without waiting for the data of immunological studies or blood serum. Of the features determined from the image intensity histogram, the contrast index, in fact, it is the white of the image intensity histogram, plays a, is a significant role, reducing the error probability by 0.04 at once. The value of the largest local reduces the error probability to 0.14 additionally. Despite the fact that the relative histogram characteristic as contact and the presence of extrema are quite invariant to lighting conditions, they are significantly affected by the choice of the area of the analyzed skin area, especially the presence and magnitude of local maxima of the histogram. 
conclusions. The use of indicator invariant to conditions of video choosing for the digital video information, information analysis, such as the relative values of histogram features, the image contrast at the magnitude of the second local maximum of the image intensity histogram with the linear discrimination model made it possible to significantly improve the quality of telemedicine information analysis without significant increase in its volume. The authors have shown the effectiveness of this approach with the example of the analysis of telemedicine video information when monitoring the condition of the patient's skin for the diagnosis of atopic dermatitis. However, it is obvious that this method can find application in the analysis of video images of any diagnosis video information, which will significantly improve the quality of telemedicine services. So, thank you very much for your attention. I'm finished. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your very, very interesting paper. And Thank I'm sure much. behind this paper, there is a, a huge research work. Thank you. Dear colleagues, do you have some questions? May I? Well, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, our Ukrainian colleagues for such an interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I'm not very familiar with the field, uh, with only with some uh, aspects. As I uh, noticed from your presentation, you presented as uh, invariant uh, to illumination conditions. I am correct? Uh, invariant. Yes. And uh, my, my question would be, is a simple logic. Uh, um, very much, uh, it depends on the illumination conditions. Because it will, let's say it will be a dark uh, video, uh, not too much uh, to, to do with uh, playing with the uh, properties of the image. Uh, are you standardizing in a way or where, where, where not the illumination condition? Because in my opinion, it might be quite, quite uh, important uh, in this uh, uh, quite complex task of, of uh, tele-diagnostics. Uh, Yes, um, uh, I, I think uh, what um, uh, do you mean? Uh, yes, I said about uh, the uh, difficult diagnosis without um, really normal uh, standards for this dimension. And uh, really it is um, um, more experimental data, uh, but um, uh, a, a great um, number of measurements uh, showed uh, the uh, effectiveness of this dimension and uh, we uh, result real um, data, uh, a real diagnostic uh, decision and uh, we um, have to continue our experimental researches, our studies and uh, we hope uh, Obtained uh, more effectiveness results in future. Okay, good, good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much for you. Excuse uh, me. Thank you, Professor Labashvitsa. Uh, may I uh, say something? I work uh, some years ago on the field, and to, to avoid the problem with the illumination, we used a sort of um, uh, a box applied on the area, and this box contained also a light source, which provided us um, collimated mm -hmm. light. And so we had a quite uniform field of light. You can try this. Maybe ah. it will help you, because ah. this camera, which uh, takes images, can be accompanied by this source and uh, the box, which close everything. Um, we have some work in this field. Uh, um, 
our after publication we can see a list of uh, our publication where uh, these questions um, are detailed right and um, you can see in this works uh, about this and we will glad to see your questions maybe uh, we we have uh, our uh, addresses and we uh, we will glad to our questions for us thank you uh, mm -hmm. uh, any time I shall read, it's very uh, great attention. Your paper, it means that it is very, very interesting. And I shall Thank send you, you what I learned during our experiments. Maybe it will be helpful. This is research, uh, uh, this is research of group of scientists at the Communication University. Uh, Enjoying with the medical staff service of the Institute of, uh, Institute of Therapy of Mount, upon, uh, after Mount. Uh, they are made scientific and practical of developing specialized medicine and diagnostic complex. I will uh, tell you about the experience uh, re received in this work. <clears throat> the very serious relevance. The creation of specialized medical and diagnostic complex for remote monitoring and to current link uh, I defend it and one of the transmission areas of modernization of healthcare structure. However, the effectivity of such complex directly depends on the telemedicine technique used by social ethnic characteristics of the allocation and the general form of patients per unit of time. Uh, research goal. The threshold of this work uh, is, is to consider all possibility of importing the method of remote diagnostics of TV this of uh, ensure comprehensive monitoring of this category of patients and modern method of constructing specialized uh, therapy and diagnostic complex. The relevance of remote monitoring of cardiovascular diseases. Uh, is currently year, first of all, the year wide state and prevention among some population, which are direct determinate of central changes of social economic aspects of his life, as well as uh, sharp uh, climatic changes of planet. In addition, in uh, the context of massive uh, epic, Pandemic and pandemic. Uh, this helps the uh, exist of the distances of the process of providing medical service. Let us analyze of methods of CVD diagnostic that are currently used to assess their opinion. Uh, the first uh, is means of uh, blood pressure in, uh, by the patient. Uh, the measurement of uh, blood pressure by doctor. Daily monitoring of uh, uh, blood pressure. Stress test with a study of blood pressure. Electrocardiography. Uh, echocardiography, examination of the fenders and the laboratory diagnosis. The first is uh, tele-ATG. 
ECG. The most common way of use telemedicine technology for patients with cardiovascular disease of tele ACG. The main goal of tele ACG of provide quality medical care as a result of remote ACG integration, interpretation, main diagnostic and clinical decision based on the interpretation result. As well as the remote support of diagnostic and treatment process. Thus, the tele ACG system is a hardware and software complex that provides reception, processes, decoding, and transmission of conclusion values of elect electrocardiograms transmitted from remote subscribers. The next is a, a 24-hour blood pressure monitoring. Our process uh, widely used the method of hemodiagnostic of CVG and the 24-hour blood pressure monitoring, which provides additional information about the blood pressure level outside of the doctor's office. This ABPM blood pressure is measured uh, during the day and short interval, 15 uh, 30 minutes. During the patient's user activity during the day and during the sleep at night. This phase processing and the data obtained on the computer. ABPE allows you to monitor and daily the fluctuation of the blood pressure. The monitored indication of ABPM includes the following average value of systolic, diastolic, mass, and pulse, and well as average head age per day day and night. Our average uh, values of blood pressure and the uh, head rate. Maximum and minimum values of blood pressure and head rate of different period of day. Daily index. Index of time of hypertonic. Variables of systolic, diastolic, means and power, blood pressure and PRA. Standard uh, ABPM indicators uh, are calculated automatically by the surveys and the most often are provided on the use of form of table one. The maximum and minimum values of blood pressure and heart rate during the day, we can see the hill one. And well, uh, our average uh, values of blood pressure and heart rate, uh, we can see and hill two. Allows a more detailed study of purchase of daily risk, uh, blood pressure and uh, volume. Select on mass optimal and defensive therapy. Evolution of feature of the secondary of blood pressure and absolutely necessary to result of ensure to need of enforcement and correction of search. So the example of the two uh, 22 house uh, ABPM trophy uh, obtained by the actor post process. Sometimes ABPM is performed uh, similar may generally and altered 
higiene todo. Das é combinar que está de significante é frente of possibilities and diagnostic cardiovascular disease. The emergence of mobile interface for health monitoring. Based on the integration of military center into mobile communication, is one of the really developed uh, areas of telemedicine. Analysis of data obtained will uh, help to build sensor of mobile system and image so way made by possible to ensure the physical space of many retail function without direct uh, conduct. Also, we uh, use the laboratory and the diagnostic chain. This developed uh, telemedicine devices make it possible to enter into the device memory on not only a search rate, HCG and MPDM, but also uh, to the level. Uh, urine uh, indicators, temperature, and other diagnostic parameters. Group glucose uh, measurement, analyze of the state of carbon metabolism and the persons with diabetes diabetes, uh, using persons device portable and digital glucose. Urine analysis, analysis of the chemical composition of urine using the portable digital urine analyzer for the testing trade. Thus, the complexity monitoring of patients' condition based on the telemedicine means used along the TLDK to receive all the one on online information necessary of monitoring of patient condition. The optimal surveys and survey structure in an information work on the technical needs of telemonitoring are the techniques dependent on the medical technique used. This is about and the total volume of patients per unit of time. The oldest effectivity of use this uh, technique and implementation this specific practical task for the creation of medical and diagnostic complex. Thank you for attention. Sorry, my English. Leave the question, please. Thank you very much. And if there are any questions from from the room, from anyone from the room? May I? Yes, please. Uh, okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Victoria Pascurte. I'm from Anesthesia and in Intensive Care Department at the Medical University uh, in Chisinau. Uh, I'm an anesthesiologist. Uh, that uh, means that uh, I'm uh, in the uh, hospital setting. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the um, reporter, uh, about the, this uh, interesting presentation. Uh, and as far as I uh, understand, uh, it refers to uh, telemedicine for uh, uh, an outpatient uh, setting. But anyway, there are, uh, I think there are uh, certain similarities. Uh, moreover, uh, I'm uh, at the moment, I'm doing a research concerning uh, building um, sepsis prediction uh, machine learning system. And uh, out of six parameters uh, uh, for these systems are cardiovascular one. And in fact, uh, the reporter mentioned uh, these uh, parameters uh, as the ones in, in uh, their setting. Um, 
My question uh, is uh, about uh, the raw rate while measuring uh, the uh, blood pressure. Um, one of the um, sources of this error is the uh, dimensions of the cuff that is applied to the patient uh, arm. And uh, in fact, this oscillometric method is quite error prone and uh, the, the, the cuff dimensions play uh, an important role in this uh, case. Uh, do you uh, take care of the cuff dimensions in, in uh, your uh, case or you are using uh, simple standard uh, cuff uh, dimensions for all the patients? Thanks for the questions. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, the, uh, the role of uh, devices and the role of the uh, um, mathematics uh, uh, using uh, we uh, need of uh, we take uh, in our uh, algorithm uh, for uh, our system. Uh, um, but this is uh, a big problem and uh, we need to work at the uh, um, oh. We have some publication of this uh, team and uh, I may give you this publication for the Okay, thank you. Uh, I will uh, receive the uh, proceedings of the conference and uh, I think I will have a chance to, to, to read more about this. Anyway, uh, thank you and uh, uh, have great success in uh, your interesting task. Okay, uh, please. Uh, you, you may, you may, uh, I you may I, next my I uh, presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, this uh, research uh, was carried uh, out within uh, the project assessment uh, of health status and quality of life of patients included in the electronic register COVID-19. Uh, the proposed uh, study is uh, to assess uh, the impact of COVID-19 on the health status of children hospitalized in specialized uh, clinics in the Republic of Moldova. And it's uh, the first uh, originally uh, study, uh, stockade and uh, processing using uh, in this uh, register, in this soft. Uh, methods uh, is in a cohort uh, retrospective study uh, that uh, contains information from the medical records of uh, 701 children with COVID-19 infection aged 1 till 18 years, uh, treated in Chisinau in period uh, March 22 and June 2021. 20, the software was decided on interactive uh, subsystem. Uh, uh, we, uh, we um, have uh, this uh, electronic register, which consists uh, two things, a subsystem. The first uh, subsystem is uh, operators who collect medical information from the hospital institution. And uh, second is in our university uh, who process medical information even uh, uh, in the central, uh, 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 even in our university. Uh, method of uh, hospitalization the children is um, the epidemiological anamnestics found out uh, that 73 percent children were uh, in a close contact with a COVID-19 uh, positive person in the last uh, 14 days and uh, the transfer from the COVID-19 uh, a 3 AG center, it's uh, during 60 um, percent emergency medical assistance uh, during 28 percent. The medical specialist uh, about uh, three percent patients, and uh, the family doctor uh, one percent at uh, the request of their parents uh, during five percent and other 
possibility uh, during one process. Um, age on uh, uh, and the gender distribution of the children living uh, COVID-19 is uh, the majority of patients in the study were from urban regions uh, during 69% patients. The mean age of the children was uh, 8.5 years. And uh, the children within uh, the first years of the group was the largest. The male uh, female ratio was on average one. The female sex privileged only children under the first years, nine years, and there was older than uh, 50 years. A distribution of the children within COVID 19 according to the form of the disease and age of patients. Most children were diagnosed with the moderate form of COVID-19 infection during 84% cases. The mild form of the disease was diagnosed in 7% patients and the severe form in the 8%. Non-critical cases or disease were recorded. The mean age of children with severe form was uh, six, uh, six years uh, compared uh, to those with moderate or mid from eight years and uh, eight uh, during nine years respectively. The male female ratio was uh, greater than uh, one for critical forms, uh, mild two. Uh, and uh, moderate uh, 1.6. The most common clinical manifestation during the, the uh, course of the disease uh, depends uh, on the age group. The body temperature about uh, 37 uh, was recorded in most cases, uh, uh, 86 percent patients. Uh, younger children had a uh, higher fever compared to older children. The main age of uh, patients with temperature about uh, 38 uh, record in um, 35 percent cases on uh, seven years, while the, the main age of patients with a body temperature uh, 38 records uh, um, uh, 51 percent. Um, and um, the uh, main uh, companions of children and or guards during hospitalization were fatigue or physical asthenia, cough, headache, and um, pharyngitis. Faringit uh, such a clinical manifestation as a change in uh, um, uh, concerns, this, uh, rush. Uh, diarrhea and uh, dyspnea. Manifestation of a uh, considered uh, pathonomic uh, for COVID such as hypoanosmia and uh, adiosia were rarely detected in children. The role of uh, imaging intervention. Uh, RICS uh, or uh, CT, uh, large dementia was detecting in uh, 271 or 38% uh, cases with the mean age of patients of uh, seven years. The mean age of children without imagination change uh, was uh, nine years. Uh, the most common comorbidities uh, was uh, anemia uh, during the six uh, persons and uh, toxic hepatitis. Uh, uh, principles of treatment, uh, the administration of oxygen therapy was necessary only 3% cases with uh, the mean age of children's uh, 12 years. Antibiotic therapy was administrated uh, 67% cases and um, 26% uh, 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 with the mild form and uh, 68 uh, with the moderate form uh, and uh, a lot of uh, children with severe form uh, uh, indicate antibiotic therapy 
during uh, um, 89%. At uh, this age, patients were considered cardiac without any clinical manifestation uh, was 97%. Uh, in the conclusion, um, uh, children mainly acquire SARS-CoV-2 infection from their family members, uh, but such source of infection remains uh, unexplained in every fourth uh, case of COVID-19. Children seem to experience a less severe form of the disease than adults. In most cases, hospitalized children develop moderate clinical forms of COVID-19. The mean age of children with severe form is lower compared to those with moderate or mild form, and uh, uh, the gender of patients does not influence uh, the course of disease. Clinical manifestation? Uh, Clinical manifestation of COVID-19 in children are non-specific and uh, do not allow differentiation from other uh, pathogens. And the uh, children's age, age influence uh, paternal manifestation. Children of uh, preschool age, uh, less seven years, more often manifest uh, higher favor uh, changes in uh, consignosis. Uh, uh, rash, uh, diarrhea, and uh, dyspnea. Antibiotic therapy is often given on, uh, daily in pediatric COVID-19 infection. The case of children non-statistically reliable correlation were found between the form of the disease and the uh, press, uh, press uh, of uh, comorbidities, and the evolution of pediatric COVID infection is Favorable uh, discharge from hospitals is done. And uh, now, uh, 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 a very important uh, conclusion is that the current of rapid uh, worldwide uh, spread of new variants of SARS CoV 2 infection requires continuous improvement or knowledge about the epidemiology and clinical characteristics of COVID 19. Thank you for attention. Thank you very much. I did a, a very interesting presentation on a topic that we have all heard probably in the last one year and a half a lot or every day. If there are any questions, please feel free to ask now. May I ask a question? Yes, please. Uh, hello, everyone, uh, again. Uh, it's quite nice to see uh, colleagues uh, reporting at this uh, conference. Uh, moreover, uh, the topic is indeed is a very important one. Uh, and, um, and moreover, uh, there is a difference between the, uh, starting with the clinical picture, treatment, etc in adult and children patients. There are differences, uh, sometimes essential differences. And as far as I know, the data concerning children uh, is not uh, as common in the literature as in case of adults. Uh, and uh, it's quite nice that this uh, research uh, presents uh, additional data concerning children, what is very important, I think. And my question is uh, a very simple one, a trivial one, a logistic one. Uh, who is the uh, author of uh, this uh, um, application you are using? Who built up the application for uh, tracking uh, these parameters concerning children uh, and COVID? Who gave you the application? Uh, the register. Yes. The register. Yes, the electronic health uh, report. Uh, uh, now, uh, uh, in this moment, uh, our, uh, the uh, me, uh, University of Medicine is uh, submitting a uh, project proposal for the implementation of the electronic register in uh, all institutions. 
and uh, afterward, uh, this registers will be a big uh, instrument uh, to improve uh, uh, management uh, and uh, monitoring uh, clinical epidemiological study, uh, 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 clinical epidemiological uh, COVID disease. Uh, authors for these registers uh, are all uh, um, my colleagues uh, um, who participate in this research. Uh, uh, you know, uh, medical university. I got it. Thank you. And thank uh, you very much. Good luck uh, with your research. I ask questions. Uh, Michael Shishkin, uh, Archive Polytechnical Institute, Ukraine. Uh, and my question is, uh, uh, is really comparative uh, data with children uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, illness or and uh, adult? Uh, so it's it's really different. Uh, uh, Mm. Different, uh, uh, different uh, mm. behaviors of this virus, uh, virus with children and adults. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. It's a big difference. Uh, first of all, uh, the children uh, have um, um, medium stadia disease uh, or. Um, um, it's uh, not uh, 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 the children haven't a complication, uh, for example, of pneumonia or uh, thromboembolia or other complication. And um, uh, um, it's uh, first of all uh, uh, difference. Uh, and and, uh, and um, a lot of children uh, um, uh, treat uh, at uh, um, home at uh, ambulatory treatment at home is uh, 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 most uh, 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 wideness uh, case and uh, so uh, for children treatment at home as general is uh, uh, treat, uh, treat uh, uh, in ambulatory uh, the family doctors uh, treat uh, this kind of patients uh, and uh, 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 in, uh, if uh, they, uh, the children have other diseases, it's a condition to uh, criteria to uh, hospitalize this kind of patients. Thank you very much. Uh, this um, uh, um, presentation, uh, what do the family doctors think about the patient safety artery in the Republic of Moldova? Uh, is um, uh, a research uh, uh, um, uh, who, uh, which uh, we do uh, um, within uh, my colleagues in Italy and Romania? Uh, premise uh, of for the Republic of Moldova is the monitoring and uh, uh, is uh, monitoring and uh, uh, combating infection associated with uh, the medical act are the only advice events reported in official statistics in Moldova. It is uh, imperative all the time to provide quality medical services to assess the clinical risk and to respect the safety of uh, patients. And the uh, problems of patient safety and quality of medical services are included by the Ministry of Health in Moldova in the education and training programs of family medicine staff from uh, 2019 years. And the premise for this uh, research is uh, the stable population in the Republic of Moldova is uh, during uh, 2 million uh, 622. Uh, and uh, which 42% uh, is urban population, 
In uh, one um, January 22 in Republic of Moldova, uh, there are uh, 1,682 uh, uh, 1, family doctors and family doctors who uh, work in medical institutions or health centers with uh, five or ten doctors. And uh, you have specific in Chisinau, you have uh, uh, five large family medical institutions within 100 doctors each. From 2018 is uh, the trend of training the individual practice of family environment where one three doctors is a new tendency in uh, family medicine. And um, the density of family doctors uh, per uh, one million uh, in habitis, uh, Moldova uh, is according to the number of doctors uh, you are between Turkey and uh, Iceland. Uh, uh, the need for family doctors now, uh, if you estimate uh, normative uh, one uh, hundred. Um, uh, and uh, one million seven hundred sixty meters. Uh, 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 you have a deficiency uh, during um, uh, fifty doctors uh, in family. The uh, uh, questionnaire um, number on the culture of patient safety was the agency for health and quality research was used to conduct the research. And the study is part of the international project Iris 2, which moved Moldova, Romania, and Italy, and uh, proposed to develop a culture of patient safety by testing modern tools for identifying and analyzing the risk for patients. And uh, uh, this is a big instrument uh, uh, which uh, recognized for the international effectiveness. And uh, proposed uh, in this study is assessing the current state of patient safety culture among Moldova family medicine based on the family doctor's uh, perceptions to identify excuse strength me, excuse and areas me, for improvement. Proposed uh, uh, objectives uh, of the study is uh, to raise staff. Uh, 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 awareness uh, of patient safety to assess uh, the current level of patient safety culture to identify strength of uh, the strengths and areas uh, that need uh, fashion development into a system returns uh, in patient safety culture. Methods uh, and materials across the sectional study, quantitative and qualitative, by applying uh, this uh, questionnaire with 62 items. The original version of the questionnaire was translated and uh, tried, uh, tried. The questionnaire was distributed directly and by email during the pandemic period. Um, uh, to a sample of uh, uh, 820 family doctors, a proportion of 48% uh, of the total number of family doctors in Moldova. And 93% of questionnaire were completed and returned. Uh, Dina, this, uh, excuse me, excuse me again. Now uh, we do not see uh, the presentation. Yeah, so you have to share it with us and uh, after that move your slide uh, you are talking about. Uh, two uh, fate of the respondents were provided in urban area centers, 45% uh, in the Kishinev area and 22% in the urban area across the country. And one fate were provided in rural area centers. Uh, respondents in our study were primary care doctors, 64% uh, specialist doctors in family medicine and seven resident doctors in last year and uh, 29 uh, uh, are doctors uh, and have a leadership or um, a manager. 
more, um, uh, more sixty percent had twelve years or more work experience in the current of center, and nineteen percent of them only had three years less work experience. Uh, half of the response. Uh, uh, fifty one percent work more than uh, forty one hours uh, per week in the uh, current uh, primary care center, uh, followed uh, by fortieth uh, uh, percent of the respondents respondents uh, who work uh, between uh, thirty three and uh, four hours per week in the center. Uh, 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 more uh, the ten uh, patient safety culture compost uh, uh, were hardly scored by the uh, respondents. Uh, these uh, findings indicate uh, kindly developed uh, patient safety culture from the point of view of family doctors for the following areas. Uh, organizational reading uh, 97 percent, teamwork 95 percent, patient care taking uh, 19 percent, staff training uh, 87. Overall perception of uh, patient safety and quality 87. Office processes and uh, standardization 81 percent, communication about error 81 percent percent. Uh, and um, uh, support of uh, patient safety 78. Uh, conversely, the work pressure and the pace area 41 is critical and needs prompt uh, in intervention. There remains area uh, concerning the communication of penance uh, 74, which has um, failing between. Uh, uh, 50 and uh, 75 percent uh, we uh, need uh, uh, development and uh, as well um, uh, what problems you identify uh, major uh, problems with the culture of patient safety is uh, that there are not uh, enough staff in moldova's primary care centers to cope with the doctor's uh, burden and the pace of work is uh, hectic. And uh, the other problem uh, is that the issue is uh, that the provides uh, in the office uh, are not enough open to staff uh, ideas about how to improve office uh, processes. Uh, and the staff are not uh, encouraged enough to express alternative with points and find uh, it difficult to voice uh, disagreement. Uh, the strength uh, of this study are application for the first time in the country, a higher response rate acceptable percent of coverage of the total number of family doctors across the country. And the conclusion is uh, Moldavian, Romanian and Italian uh, research, uh, researchers collaborated within uh, the Iris 2 project, uh, international, international project to carry out a study to uh, identify area, areas of uh, patient safety, culture and meeting improvement based on the perception of family doctors in the Republic of Moldova. And the application of the Romanian version, uh, this uh, uh, questionnaire uh, um, pointed out that work pressure and uh, pace and the communication areas need urgent intervention for improvement. Thank you very much for attention. Thank you very much. Are there any questions from, from the room? Uh, hello, I am Carlo Terano. I'm speaking from, from Italy. I have not a uh, question, just uh, a comment. 
first of all, I, I, I would like to, to thank our colleague uh, Galina for uh, this interesting presentation of our uh, common work. And um, I should say that uh, I do believe that patient safety in uh, family medicine centers is a very challenging matter that should be much largely addressed in the Republic of Moldova, as well as uh, uh, abroad. Um, I should add that we also have found some important differences between the perception of family doctors in Chisinau and uh, in uh, the family doctors uh, in the rest of the country, uh, rural or uh, um, urban um, um, environment. Uh, thus, I believe that a deeper insight into this matter is needed to understand all the reasons for these differences in order to adopt the appropriate intervention aiming at a more homogeneous patient safety culture across uh, your country. Uh, well, I, um, I think that uh, international collaboration and the networking would also uh, be very useful uh, for benchmarking between uh, our countries, uh, Moldavia, Romania, Italy, and uh, other European countries. Uh, thank you again for your attention. Thank you for the intervention. I have a chance to make this presentation. Today I will speak about yes, I do. the overall <laughs> cybersecurity development in critical domains in the Republic of. Moldova. My name is Aurelian Buzdugan and I'm a PhD student at the Moldova State University. If we talk about critical infrastructures, we know that there is an increased uh, coverage in the media in the last period. Probably everyone has heard about cyber attacks against energy sector, against transportation, healthcare, and so on. So critical infrastructures are basically vital organizations for our society, for the well-functioning of our country, economy, and so on. Also, we can mention that critical infrastructures are also research centers, uh, for example, those that deal with nuclear or radiological materials. Before, critical infrastructures were designed with a focus on operation and safety. And as the digitalization process has also covered this domain, we have now to deal with a new type of threats, an emergent type of threats, we can say, uh, which uh, are cyber uh, threats. Therefore, these new technologies that help improve the sensor activities, monitoring, control, and in many times they replace old operational systems or certain parts of a system uh, have course given us a lot of uh, opportunities but uh, also a lot of uh, challenges as part of a research done in the phd project project we have proposed to use decision support system which are type of information systems in order to be able to uh, perform better risk cyber risk management in critical infrastructures and the main reason is because this um, type of risk management involves a large amount of data. Many times data is not always understood by all parties. For example, decision makers need only strategic data, whereas operators need a lot of technical data. And we think that emerging problems require uh, solutions that are offered by also emerging technology. We have created a model to support uh, the concept of the decision support system or the TSS that will help assess the maturity of cybersecurity in the organization. And the main goal of which we created the model was to assess whether uh, the human factor or human dimension is well developed and uh, if investments are required actually in a technical system, such an information system, to improve its capabilities or to better train the people or the users of this uh, system. Uh, we made the model as simple as possible and uh, 
in order to make it easier for organizations to adopt it, to adapt it to their needs. And we have tried to cover all types of uh, cyber uh, of critical infrastructure. Uh, the model has already been reviewed and confirmed by external reviews from the Institute of Metrology from Moldova, as well as the Slovenia Nuclear Safety Administration. Both results confirm the applicability of the model, as well as that it uh, will achieve the scope that it was proposed for. And moreover, it uh, can also be used to support other type of assessments, for example, internal ISO 27000 review, which are information security management. The model has also been awarded a bronze medal at the Cadet Innova 2021, which is a new innovation contest held every year in Romania. Um, the model, as mentioned, is aligned with other uh, standards and partially it can also support other type of assessments. So besides ISO 27000, it can also uh, help, for example, to do evaluations or compliance assessments against NIST. Uh, standards or against recommendations, for example, from nuclear security series from the IAEA when it comes to uh, evaluating the computer security technologies or controls that were implemented. <clears throat> so the model uh, briefly covers four dimensions. These are the ones that we have identified and we thought these are the most critical ones, and each dimension has um, is described by certain attributes. So we proposed five levels for the model for evaluating cybersecurity maturity from very high to very low. Therefore, each level is described by 16 um, attributes. Here on the screen, you can see, for example, the um, criteria and the attributes that define, uh, that help assess the policy and administration dimension. And on the left, we have organizations that are have a very high cybersecurity maturity, and um, as we go to the right, column by column, the cybersecurity uh, maturity decreases and the risk increases. Uh, so, why have we also um, looked at the nuclear and radiological area? Is because computer security or computers are also used in nuclear facilities, in nuclear uh, research reactors, but also in uh, other type of technologies that might make use of nuclear radiological materials, so, such as, for example, the ones in healthcare. Therefore, the um, line between information security and nuclear security becomes very thin, and many times we see that cybersecurity is already embedded in uh, most of, uh, of areas or technologies nowadays, especially in the critical infrastructure. So as part of the analysis that we want to cover today, we did a retroactive application of a model against the cybersecurity development, developments that took place in the Republic of Moldova. So we started our analysis from 2015, where we had um, one law on nuclear security, where we had only one mentioning of IT security as an interesting part of nuclear and radiological physical security, so basically the systems that ensure the physical security for such uh, object. Uh, therefore, um, you can see uh, on a small graph how we evaluated um, the maturity back then. So we, we see something in the policy administration. And of course, if it's there, that means there's a level of awareness. Both policy administration can uh, Im impose or can help the education and evaluation dimension to increase, but also it would not become part of a policy, of course, there would not be any aware. The next um, assessment is for year 2020, where, we, where there was a new law uh, on the cybersecurity program. This one was developed for, let's say, future looking for four years, and already it started looking more at capacity building. It was looking both at technology and human resources uh, aspects. And of course, training and ability to, risk, to identify, to respond to a cyber attack, and implement security control, also red attack. Therefore, we believe that overall cybersecurity has a, I would not say best, but has a good, solid foundation in terms of policy. So the program is future looking. Uh, it improves a lot the education, it focuses a lot on the human factor, which uh, also would directly lead to a better risk 
management. Of course, the problem of resources on how to implement many times this law is another topic that is outside the scope of this presentation. Next, we have a new minimum security requirement in 2017, which basically further improve the dimension for policy administration as well as education and evaluation. So as the name suggests, it's basically an attempt to set minimum security requirements across all public sectors, which in Republic of Moldova directly affect nuclear and radiological uh, operators, because many times these are state-owned. So, uh, of course, such a document has the risk that it can easily become outdated. However, on the other side, it helps create a baseline across all public sectors, so then it's also easier to assess, both internally by the organization and by external parties. Uh, gives clarity on what has to be implemented and, and helps both operators, but also senior management understand the importance of the topic. Further uh, on, we looked at the information security strategy, which was adopted and promulgated in 2019. It's basically already is uh, a, a solid baseline on information security across all type of dimensions. Of course, it's always accompanied, accompanied by an action plan, which also included um, the interest of states to protect critical infrastructures. Therefore, we see that um, with such a strategy, as well as the development, we can say that all dimensions are in green. Of course, some are in that lighter green, where we think that it still requires improvement. For example, work environment, which is basically the ability and the chance given to the employee to develop in terms of skills, to be able to raise risk, to be able to propose solutions, as many times it's not about the knowledge at the operator le level, but it's many times about the ability to speak out and to express certain uh, issues that might occur in the workplace. In conclusion, so we would like to mention that um, both the external reviews as well as the re retroactive review of a model uh, prove it multidimensional. It can be used for various scopes to both assess whether a specific decision support system uh, requires, in addition, let's say, better training for the users, or maybe the system needs to be refined. But also, for example, as we have seen, it uh, helps to do assessments on cybersecurity maturity. Of course, a model can also be used for self-assessments. For example, each organization can use it, and that is why uh, we, uh, we, we work hard to make it as simple as possible and not to make it as comprehensive. So it's always easy to build upon uh, its, this, this structure. Uh, we did a similar analysis all in the healthcare sector in Moldova, and we can say that the model more or less shows the same area, of course. Um, as that area didn't have a lot of, let's say, attention, as in the past few years when it came to cyber attack, probably the developments were not that um, obvious. However, uh, in the past years, we see a lot of focus on the healthcare systems, on medical system, on resilience, and so on. So, again, in, in conclusions, we'd like to mention that cybersecurity is always a process. It's never a checkbox that if there's a policy or a strategy approved, that fixes it all. No, it's always process to develop, to raise each dimension. And we have also seen, for example, that you cannot get to a, uh, a maturity level or work environment or cyber risk management if you don't have adequate policies in place, if you don't have a, an awareness level, and so on. Thank you very much for your attention. And Thank you very much for, for attention. And if you have any question, please, please let me know. Uh, may I? <clears throat> yes, please. Well, uh, thank you for your very interesting um, report. Uh, for the very beginning, uh, I would like to mention that uh, I'm quite far from this area. Uh, but um, uh, I, would, I will have a few uh, trivial questions. Uh, as far as I understand, uh, you you are uh, building uh, these uh, systems, uh, and in a certain uh, programming language environment. Uh, can you tell us uh, what which tools are you using for? 
<clears throat> building up such systems. So for um, for the decision support system itself, which is an information system, uh, we didn't program itself. We just built the concept. And the main reason is because uh, let's say code becomes very easily outdated. So if we build something now and we want to publish it and so on, and by the time, let's say, it, it's public and it's presented, it already needs to be updated to cover new vulnerabilities in the code and so on. So we wanted to make it as a concept and we focused a lot on the elements that have to be considered in the critical infrastructures because these are many times different than traditional IT systems. So for example, in critical infrastructure, there's a lot of focus on resilience, so how the system operates when there's some errors. And many times it, it also comes, for example, for uh, a focus on safety. So what happens, for example, if a medical device that is hacked compared to a computer system? So we'll say if a home computer or a computer in a small office is being hacked, probably there's no safety impact. But if when, let's say, it's a medical device impacted or there's some, let's say, even energy sector, uh, any type of critical infrastructure there can be a safety. So we build a lot on the concept and what, let's say, criteria that have to be taken into account. The model is also theoretical. However, we built a small code in, um, in Python to basically help the assessment process. So uh, as you saw on one slide, the policy administration, basically the table is the theoretical part, and we just build a small program to help go through each step. So basically, each question will be asked to the operator and would need to answer from one to five what is the level from very low to, to very high. So that one was, was built in, in, in Python. I got it. And one maybe uh, additional uh, naive question. Um, as I said, I'm not very familiar, but uh, just using simple logic uh, and using some extrapolation for uh, DevOps uh, field uh, in um, elaborating different types of, of uh, software, uh, there uh, is a quite a specific uh, stage uh, concerning uh, data drift. How do you address, how do you imagine to address this data drift or data drift similar uh, aspects uh, concerning uh, cybersecurity system you are working on? Thank you very much. That's indeed a, it's a very uh, good and challenging question. So um, we did not, let's say, evaluate at this moment uh, some, something like data driven system. However, in when it comes to um uh, cyber security there is a lot of of data to be considered so for example if we look we can take a small example let's say a medical device so is that medical device connected to a computer where there is let's say a browser is that computer part of an out of the network let's say in, in the clinic or, or hospital so when we need to address let's say a cyber risk and if we talk about the critical infrastructure, in this case, healthcare, then we can see that all these nodes have to be taken into account. And there is a lot of information on each one on, of, about vulnerabilities. So a vulnerability in the, let's say, office computer, let's say in HR or accountant office, can also be a risk in the end to a medical device if this is not properly um, uh, separated. So basically... Yes, it has to also be data driven because there's no other way. I mean, you need to understand what data you're going to analyze. And in this case, it's, it's a lot because in the critical infrastructure, it can be even more. So, for example, if we talk about energy sector, so we can talk about one the electric grid being under attack, but then we also have to see that this is often uh, without boundaries. So, for example, if another electric grid from another country, Romania or Ukraine, or we, where we can also import energy is affected. Can this affect us? So many times it, it, it goes, let's say, a few levels higher to understand all the amount of data that, that is necessary for, uh, for this. Um, DevOps, yes, of course, it can be used, especially when it comes to the development of a code or of this decision support system is DevOps. Uh, nowadays, can many times the new concept is DevSecOps, where uh, Security is also included in, in part of, let's say, this process to, to develop something or develop the, the product in this case. 
So of course, as part of a development process and as part of let's say testing, using, assisting, reviewing, and so on, uh, definitely it's a standard, and we we always supported the use of standards even in uh, uh, when it comes to DSLs because it's many times to reuse what was already done, tested, and everyone they came with a good practice rather than starting from 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 scratch from the beginning. Okay, thank you for your comprehensive uh, elaboration on this aspect. Thank you. Thank you very much.